three-point play. He's got 15 already tonight, wow. this Hobner. We'll go to the line to try to make it 16. His career high is 29, and that came back in week one, or I should say game number one, against Schroeder this year, the only other home game of the season. He rolls in the free throw. The Lancers lead by eight with 5.4 seconds left here in this first half. Inbounds the ball to Javante Lyons. Lyons going coast to coast, tries to pass. It's deflected away, and we have hit the halftime break with LaSalle leading Purcell Marion 34 to T. Yeah, nice job by Lance. Final possession to hold the ball. Again, foul. Play today. Seconds. Like that's going to happen. Sell me quarter. The It's game full of runs. Fourth. The, the, you know what? Let's now came out the the, the shell nine point. Uh, uh, fast. I don't know, but devs uh, in this head. It'll be a it'll be a second. Our ship at the three two C's team. The scouting point. We're going to slide next to us. And uh, I appreciate it. Especially the. He's sick there. Oh, this all going on the infantry. We're about to he's going to be in the it's rank. So we're just letting the crowd and get say we're giving high fives as the uh, lanes are ahead of the locker room. So in a future years, future, future, that's this court. That's got to be able to play the score. Eight in You know, great was canceled on Friday. Night. That to that oh, we're, um uh, I got now. Uh, lady had a month from anyway. Now we're thinking uh, in the so we've got a couple of for at the Elvis. Um, we all have twenty. Have a night. Do a little. We today um him that little road we didn't met even on lead it was true now he's back the guy back has something pre so yeah. we're gonna more hills and he's get more that we're eating how broad we will buy ever for the there's a game night with buffalo that game yes Take They're now going to play us. They're coming down well. Now, game four. They'll be they're looking forward, and they do. They went Pittsburgh here. here. Um, they, they said, I'll make some teams if we can't. Looking for a little pot in another 11 seasons. Um, at all, out, out, get a, a team, team a jersey. For, for yeah, it'd be very uh, yeah, so I, 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 They're open 
about the police sign, and uh, we just did like big offense to score. I can't remember exactly the school that came this year. But, um, sequels. It's the same way. I'll just have a shot game. Remember, Joe, you realize I got and it was real play. There's no for any kind of game. They played, and then they went one, one weekend. They, went, they went, Lou played a couple of and they, from there, they're going a few more. But um, but it was a team of talent that we took the event. I thought a lot of games. So that's right there. How did the other day? I was also together. That, um, we're, um, the email fire next day, and we just this. There's some take. Hey, you know the new rules. Or, 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 or code like, like um, and those, those Friday and the G C game kind of start winding your way through. We have explored the uh, possibility of, of, of doing a uh, varsity only uh, holiday tournament um, if the gym time's available, something along those lines. But we're really trying to figure out what we're going to do during that holiday week. So the uh, heading down to Florida or anything else like that, that is kind it's of It's not something, uh, you know, you get what we're doing. Yeah, you know what, you, at the end of the day, while the, while the um, you know, Coach Fleming swore by the uh, Kingdom of the Sun tournament. Yeah, and how, how it got the team ready. You know, financial to that more, more would fish. Um, only that the seems the in Ford Main Dome. Uh, see things Absolutely. Very teams and keep you get very busy on a game. Have you got a lot of football next year? We got Japanese West player on a place they track. So we fill that. We have anything else figured out. But actually, for the last year, you know, they're really hard for of us to get harder assistance, buddy. That's so I think actually more or so your equipment uh, to live. So we're not explaining if teams do uh, go ahead and drop we have some in us uh, from a competitive talk that system. They don't, they, they don't, then being lose the south. Well, it makes the How important is it to have Ted's in the only thing you got? Well, it's not. Get LaSalle has to play the football. Not the team at level. Plays 15 games without a ball. You and your ball. So, bro, you got guys that have to run them. So, it is on with our getting. Playing games is not taking off. No, you're. Could potentially, it, it is an average. It, it, it can adjust, sir. We'll look at uh, the goals on the LaSalle Athletic. I appreciate the great oh. pleasure of calling to join the Larry Abilene, third, fourth, sixth, LaSalle, Corral, seventh, eleventh. I am wearing the obstacle 19. And Marvel up. Fair one. I finally total zero. So, in the past four per cell, they were led to the in first half. Had first half, Jay Garrett with seven for the Lancers. Lee Hobner has. Getting with one. And now he some built court out for the 10th. Riley, Dion, he 
second quarter. Cole Hildebrand and Haldick. The starting guy is down there. People is played in. And Lancer starts the second for the best. Listen, you ring in the on the more he's really come about. Zach's down a shot. Second thought about it. Henry Lee. Right. He's looking for some help. And there's a set of shots. And I put her back to Loudon just in point and that real There's War who is still up the first so many already leading the kids scoring nine for every lap with his kid. Need to can need to wear the in this game. Here, here to, uh, you know, start big and start that line point uh, from, from to rebound. It. There's an opportunity yeah. there and not. Oh, the the first minute and a half of this third quarter. The Sal looking to even their record at five and five as they come in. During their four wins, Marty, this is a Lancer team that averages 63 points. Five losses in the 45. So an 18 point swing. Team pairing and losses. Wara. Wara misses the layup, gets his own three. Up! And the ball will be called. Arrow to pairing. Go. Bringing the ball down. Yeah, Warren. Really guys on the they bowled. Javon. Line. Points a game. But he. Junior. Lion. Much. Corner. Uh, yeah. That. Uh, and the lead back, back down. So answers. Watch uh, Marion go high. And then cut the lead to five. One, three, one, half. Press that line. Vogel pulls good for Purcell Marion. Purcell Marion come true. Real lot of rebounds. Man. Pointer no key is foul. On number two, my little. Extends to a full. Seems for some. And then get over there. And a. Ow. Oh. Right. Was that ace? I think a little bit less. Five, five left. Order seven. Lead. The one. Versus DCL Central, 
Their last loss was to Middletown Fenwick. This but it's all with third quarter. Answer third Lions driving high the basket. Almost travel. Eddings fires up a three and knocks it down. Lions, the best three-point shooter on this Cavs team, has cut the Lancer lead to five. Eddings goes to the basket, and the layup goes in. Well, I tell you what, he did a nice job surveying that defense, found the seam, and took it to the hoop. Yeah, you call that maybe a delayed break. Shot no good up by Jared Baldock, the sixth guard. Good. Out of bounds by Lance. We're looking for that last drive on the possession. Encouraging him to play a little defense. could have used a little more defense there. As good for the hoop, is kind of in the second half. He's got 15. Time out. 358, 41, 36. Eight left the fourth Vail Sports Stag will take place on Wednesday, January 31st. The VIP reception starts at 5.30 with the dinner starting at 7 o'clock. The program will begin at 8 o'clock. And the featured speaker this year is Hall of Famer. Boy, it seems like they have Hall of Famers all the time that come in for this event. Raleigh Fingers. The VIP ticket is $175, which includes a steak dinner, VIP reception in the gym prior to the event, and preferential seating. The sports stag ticket is $60, which includes admission and the steak dinner. You can uh, go to lasallehs.net for tickets or contact Barrett Cohen at 741 26 74. Not a better sports stag in the city, Marty. And the Lancers sports stag with yet another Hall of Famer coming here to LaSalle. That foul is going to go on number three, Ace Taylor, and that is his third foul, third team foul. Lancer lead at five. Loudon a little bit lazy with that pass, ends up getting called for the travel. And he absolutely did, Jeff. Yes, he did. LaSalle led by six at half. And it's kind of gone back and forth, you know, for a while now between that to 10 point. I'm just wondering, does one team put a run or a little separation? Alex Jr. Handler. That is quarter. Again, this body there. Clifton, long time. Third time. Now block the foul. The on line. What's your second? Going on, not a whole lot of room. Great to get out, block it. They just get a little So on the court now for the Lancers, it's Riley Hobner, Henry Loudon, Coden Lambert, Derek Eddings, and Nathan Vogelpohl. Vogelpohl goes down the lane with the layup up and in. Every time the Lancer, they hoop. Seems like it with a shot. Yeah, up in the air, stole it up, right up, bodied up, and a fast 
will ball eight tail. They're gonna go. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Taylor. <laughs> Taylor. Three and nothing. Go on. Garrett. Five teams on the Sal Marion. Baseless. The rebound. Ball back and uh, turn up and uh, run in a fine pass and time for the Cavaliers. Is this is five eight minute fifty four Vogel point pole. lead and an air ball by Vogel pole. <laughs> Ace Taylor, a wild shot. Doesn't go in, but he does draw the foul. They're going to get Hovner. That's his third foul. Well, that's one guy that the Lancers cannot afford to lose. How many points does he have right now? Still 16. Hasn't scored in the second half. Wow. Yet. And the Lancers have been able to maintain that lead without Hovner scoring. Is a big first. Free throw. Just 50% free throw shooter. That one. Good. Ed. Stand free map. Oh. A lot of people came to. Off rim. Number six. Near. Shot and a down on the rim. Oh, I didn't. This call could go. Ball either. Just bring all that press back on. And that's and it's really taking away the set fast break points that they had in that first half. And I'm sure that's what Scott Kerr was thinking about with moving to the seven minute. They replace at halftime 28. With the jump on almost trap. Old ball. Hey, what? Vogel underneath the uh, basket, and they elected not to throw it to him. And a foul will be called outside with nine seconds left on Javante Lyons. And that'll send the Lancers to the line for a one and one. And that is. Something that will definitely be in LaSalle's favor in that fourth quarter to be able to head to the free throw line. Derek Eddings at the line for the Lancers with a four point lead. <laughs> Puts free throw number one down. I'm feeling Scott Kerr's not real happy with officiating tonight. I don't think he is. <laughs> he has been barking at the officials for a good portion of this game right in front of us. Lambert with the shot, and he is fouled. It will go Jay Garrett. 18 foul per quarter. Lancer nation aggressive calling the on percent <laughs> 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 
And the Lancers with a chance to go up seven if Lambert can knock down the second free throw. And it rims out. Lancer has only made half of those free throws. At Taylor fires up a three at the buzzer. That's no good. And we have reached the end of the third quarter with LaSalle leading Purcell Marion 45 to 39. And Marty, both teams scored 11 points in that third quarter. I've got, uh, yeah, I've actually got Purcell with 13 and LaSalle with 11, but Thursday, whatever, close enough. Thursday night, LaSalle football Chuck talk featuring Scott Isperding and, of course, the venerable Brett Schneeber. He's a legend, I've been told. Chalk talk. It is Chalk talk. It's local grade school and high school football coaches are enjoyed it. Invited to join LaSalle football staff and special guest Scott Isperding who is the co-offensive coordinator at Ohio University. Chalk Talk will go on from 6 to 8 p.m. at LaSalle. There is no charge to attend the event, but you have to register in advance. That is LaSalle Football Chalk Talk featuring Scott Esperding and our own Brett Schneeber, the one and only, the legendary Brett Schneeber. Come listen to him talk as well on Thursday night. He's not gonna give away any secrets, is he? But I don't think he's gonna give away all the secrets here tonight, or Thursday night. Eddings being pressured all the way to the end of the floor. And a reach-in foul on Ace Taylor. That'll be the ninth team foul on the Lancers. The fourth on Taylor. Nice thing is, this game in LaSalle will be in the double bonus. And that's a huge advantage for the Lancers, who are a 75% free throw shooting team. I wonder if it's just been a game where it's, uh, it seems like since that first quarter, you know, both teams have kind of held water, where it's just gone between that five and 10 point margin. And, um, At this point, it's, you know, Purcell's going to have to put it together a run to tighten this game up as LaSalle is back up eight. Hobner misses the steal, leads to an open three by Baldock, and that goes over the backboard and out of play, and LaSalle has possession. A couple new Lancers come onto the court. On the court for Lancers, number 12, Henry Loudon. Number three, Riley Hobner. Number 13, Derek Eddings. Number two, Nathan Vogelpohl. And number zero, Coden Lambert. You know, Derek Eddings, sophomore, has had the ball in his hands most of this uh, second half, Jeff. Boy, he's done a nice job. I know that's somebody that Coach Goaty is very high on. A layup there by Clark Jefferson. Has cut the lead back to six. And as soon as you say that, the ball goes to Riley Hobner to bring up. Well, Hobner's the one that had it uh, stolen away from the double team on the last possession. <laughs> Henry Leldon falls down as he... And a charge will be called on Coden Lambert. Not sure about one of those calls, but uh, goes against the Lancers. That'll be the third on Henry Loudon. We appreciate you tuning in tonight. I'm Jeff Bossy. Alongside of me is Marty Strohoffer. We will be back here Friday night as the Lancers play St. Mary's of New York, a school from outside Buffalo who currently sits with a 7-0 and record. Marty, the interesting thing is, and I don't know if we've ever had this before, another team nicknamed the Lancers. Is that right? I don't know if we've ever seen that before. 
in, got, in got, basketball or football. Yeah. I got my money on the Lancers in that contest. That's, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's the safest bet. That is, a, that is the safest bet. So you're always on top of those kind of things. Cam Porter gets called for that foul. Purcell will be on the, in the bonus on the next Lancer foul. Boy, Warrock cleaned, used his body. Loudon went down, and the lead is down to four. And stolen away. Loudon had his pocket picked. And leads to a layup on the other end by Alex Dotson. And this is as close as Purcell has been. It's a two-point game. Marty, you just kind of wonder, how does this young, inexperienced Lancer team handle this situation? Well, I think, you know, they're going to have to rely on, on the leadership of uh, their most experienced players, who is really Riley Hobner and, and Henry Loudon at this point, Jeff. Yeah, those are the guys that have got to lead you through this, your two seniors. Because this is uh, a game that... Uh, I don't think they have. They, I don't think the Lancers have trailed at any point in this game. No, unless it, it was very right. early on. It might have been two to nothing, but that's it. And uh, this is as Purcell's been to within two on a couple occasions. And what we've talked about is most times when Purcell's gotten to within a basket, it's led to a LaSalle layup or shot from close in. And we'll see if that trend continues. But Purcell really has done a nice job of taking away those transition points in the Lancers in the second half. Yeah, you know, the, the Cavaliers are all kind of amped up now that they've snuck back to two points. They're being very aggressive defensively. I think the Lancers have to look for some easy baskets under the basket because, and, and opportunities when, when the Cavaliers try to be too aggressive outside. Use that aggressiveness against them. Exactly. Lance Vogelpohl over to Hobner, 555. It's LaSalle 47, Purcell Marion 45. The Lancers running that weave offense. And there it is. Marty, we've talked about it. Uh, you want it once again. The Lancers have their lead trimmed to two, and they respond with a layup. 49-45. They need to stop. Three-pointer in the corner. And Javante Lyons knocks it down. Lead is down to one. What did they call? Offensive foul. Boy, I did not see that at all, Marty. I I saw the I don't know which Cavalier it was, reaching in from behind, trying to poke the ball away. I didn't see an offensive foul. I don't know if you did. No, I, I actually looked down to mark the score and did not see that play. A very <laughs> but strange it goes on call. Loudon. And Purcell with the ball and a chance to take the lead. And it would be their first lead of the game. Purcell comes in on a three game winning streak. Going to the basket and a blocking foul is called. They're gonna get Nathan Vogelpohl. Purcell's three-game winning streak has included wins over Schroeder, Roger Bacon, and that 72-40 win this past Saturday night over Summit Country Day. Well, this will be an interesting last five minutes of this game. Just test the metal of this young Lancer team. I'm not sure what the delay is here. Well, I think there were only four Cavaliers on the court. They were trying to make a substitution and they gotta wait till after the first shot. 
Alex Dotson, a 75% free throw shooter, looking to give the Cavs the lead if he can hit both. First one good. We are tied at 49. It's been a long time since Purcell Marion has beaten the Lancers. Sal's beaten them nine straight times. And that is in jeopardy here this evening. Second free throw's good, and Purcell has their first lead of the game. It's 50 to 49 with a little over five minutes left. I think, Marty, it's time to turn to your seniors here. And there is a senior, Henry Loudon. Three-pointer rims in. And Riley Hobner lost his shoe. Lost his shoe, so we're gonna have a stoppage of play so he can get the shoe back on. Boy, what a big shot by the lefty. Who coming in tonight, Marty, one of 15 from behind the three-point line. Well, they needed that one at that point in time. Hobner with the steal. And has, and Hildebrandt had it and had it poked away from behind. Dotson fires up a shot. It rims out. And that's Hobner's fourth. Oh, that's a big foul, Marty. They cannot afford to lose Riley Hobner. And he's going to have to watch his aggressiveness. I'm not sure if you can afford to take him out of the game at this point. No, I don't think you can, Jeff. But I think what you will do is you won't see him guarding Dotson anymore. Riley Hobner still has not scored in the second half. 16 first half points, and the senior has gone scoreless in the second half. Quite a change. Well, it'll be interesting to see if, if Coach Kerr now instructs the Cavaliers to go at Hobner uh, on defense. Whoever's guarding him, or whoever he's guarding him. This is the free throw, and a push-off will be called <laughs> on Javante Lyons, and we will walk to the other end of the court to shoot two free throws. What a big swing that was there. And that's four on Lyons. So Javante Lyons has four. Ace Taylor, the other guard, has four. Riley Hobner has four fouls for the Lancers. But Ace Taylor right now is not on the court for Purcell, but they're keeping their leading scorer, Javante Lyons, who averages 15 a game. He is. Now they switch. Yep, Taylor. He Taylor seems like a dead say in that. Yep. Loud with a big free throw. He's Henry got. Well, he's now a, he's got uh, five and four is nine. He's, he's played well here tonight. Loudon who comes in averaging six points a game. His career high is 10 points. So he's a hoop away. The Lancers did sub out Riley Hogner. See how long Riley's out for. Three point Lancer lead. Shot up and missed. Rebound it and up and in by Brian Waraw, and Waraw has been a beast inside for the Purcell Marion. And timeout taken by the Lancers. 4.27 left, LaSalle 54, Purcell Marion 53. Interesting, Coach Godey takes a timeout. They had that press beat, and almost to get Hobner back in the game offensive. A little early to be doing kind of offense and defense substitutions here. With four and a half minutes remaining. Yeah, that's, uh, you're gonna have a hard time with that, especially with the pace this game has been played at. But now both of the guards for Purcell Marion, Ace Taylor and Javante Lyons, who both have four fouls, are both out of the game.
Hildebrand to the basket. A basket and a foul. A huge shot up and in by Hildebrand. Hildebrand leads this Lancer team. Highest field goal percentage on the squad. And he will try to complete the three-point play. Hobner checks out along with Nathan Vogelpohl. And Hildebrand misses the free throw and the lead remains <coughs> at three. Ace Taylor has checked back in the game along with Javante Lyons. Nice There's pass. Warall again. He gets the, the hoop in the harm. And he'll head to the line with a chance to tie this game up. How many Brian Warhol got now? Is he still leading them 16. in scoring? He's leading them in scoring. Uh, or actually, Lions has 18. Oh, Lions has 18. So 34 of the 55 points coming from two Cavaliers. Misses the free throw. Loudon done a nice job on the boards with the rebound. One point Lancer lead, under four minutes to play. Hobner being guarded by Jefferson. And he will be called with the foul, bodying up Riley Hobner. That sends Hobner to the line, and this is where being in that double bonus helps now. Of course, both teams in the double bonus. It also helps you're sending an 82% free throw shooter to the line. And that is Riley Hobner's first point of the second half. Wow. Kind of amazing that the Lancers have been able to maintain this lead without the offensive production in the second half from Riley Hobner. It's both. He's going to come out of the game. Deion Campbell goes in. And uh, we are seeing He's that offensive that for offense. defensive substitution. Three-point Lancer lead. Bringing the ball up. And going to the line now will be number 12, Jared Baldock, the young sophomore who was not on the score sheet that he's played all season until tonight. Free throw rolls in. But Marty, he's looked very confident on the floor tonight. Yeah, that's his first point of the game. And now Coach Kerr making the offense and defensive substitutions as Taylor and Lyons check back out. Both coaches trying to preserve their top scores. 58-57, 340 and counting. Lancer's lead is at one. Eddings pass, deflected and stolen away. Dotson with the steal. And Dotson yeah, runs a, over that's Henry a good call. He went right into two guys. That's a good call. That is a very good call. Not sure where Dotson was going on that. And that is Alex Dotson's fourth team foul. So there are three Purcell Marion starters that have four personal fouls. 320 left, LaSalle 58. Purcell Marion, 57. Been a great game tonight here at Bill Cady Court. We're glad you joined us. Hobner looking to get some offense generated in the second half. Goes down the lane. Right at Dotson. And Dots, Dot, he went right at Dotson, and Dotson couldn't defend it. Now, Dotson knew uh, if I try to defend this, I might pick up my fifth and final foul. Lancer faithful, wanting a traveling call there. 60-57. Now Hobner is guarding Dotson, so that'll be interesting. Baldock, a fadeaway three that rims in. Jared Baldock, his first made 
three-pointer of the season. 60-60. Sab better get this ball over, and they do. Loudon back over to Hobner. 2.15 and counting. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Lancers try to hold it here. Oh, uh, yep. That was a bad pass by Hildebrand, who, as he was trying to hand it off to Hobner, gave it to him too high. And Hobner gets called for the, the travel or carry. And now, with two minutes left, the Cavaliers will have an opportunity to take a lead with a tie game 60 to 60. Purcell Marion substitutes in their two starting guards. They both have four fouls, Ace Taylor and Devontae Lyons. Riley Hobner stays on the floor with, hit, with him having four fouls. Eddings almost with the steal. Corner, three-pointer, Lyons. Good. 63-60, the biggest lead of this game for Purcell Marion. Oh, they wanted a charge. I think there was a lot of acting there. I thought it was a good nod call the South throws, throws it away. it to the other team. Time out, Cavaliers. And the Cavaliers have been full of energy in this second half, Jeff. They have been in a enormous shot by Javante Lyons. Came into tonight 11 of 35 from behind that three-point arc. How many threes has he knocked? Is it three threes he's had tonight? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Wow. He's got 21. <laughs> and Marty... I, LaSalle's going to come out and got to be pressing Purcell Marion, looking for a steal. And just got to be aggressive and see if you can uh, <laughs> turn them over and get a chance for a uh, transition basket. Now this is a season high five three pointers for Javante Lyons. Previous high he had was two on a couple different occasions. So he is uh, performing well from behind the arc tonight. Boy, they let Taylor just run right by there. Well, that can't couldn't have been the plan there. Dodson outside being guarded by Hildebrand. Corner by Javante Lyon. And it's back outside to Jared Baldock. Baldock, the young sophomore, who's very limited playing time. Lions, Lions open for three. That is his third three-pointer of the fourth quarter. And the sixth of the game. 66-60. Pass over to Loudon, back out to Eddings. Eddings for three. Good! Derek Eddings has cut the Purcell Marion lead in half. It's 66-63 with 56 seconds left. But Javante Lyons has been the, the story here in this fourth quarter for Purcell Marion. Yeah, he's got 24 tonight. 16 in the second half. And the Lancers have left him open in the corner a few too many times, and he seems, namely six. And he <laughs> seems to like that spot on the floor. Marty, there's a few guys on this team that you can foul for Purcell Marion. They're 70% free throw shooter, but they do have a few guys that struggle at the line. Is it time to come out and foul right away, or do you try to play defense and get a steal? I was a little surprised to see uh, Lions shoot that last one, Jeff. I thought they might try to hold on to the ball a little longer. You know, it, occur it, it seems to me that uh, Purcell isn't a team that, that uh, tends to pull the ball out and hold on to it for a period of time. No, not, we haven't seen that yet tonight. Interesting that uh, 
Jared Baldock brings the ball up. Now they're going to try to try. Oh, and he threw it away. Oh. The Lions in the corner. Boy, he almost traveled. And a foul will be called on Cole Hildebrand. I'm not sure if that was the plan as he knocked down Ace Taylor with 41 seconds left. Maybe not a bad guy to foul, Marty. As, as I was talking about, some guys you could foul. This is one of them, just a 56% free throw shooter. And he misses the first. Taylor, a 5'10 senior and a second year starter for this Cavalier squad. Lancer's going to make sure if, this re if he misses this, they get the rebound. Loudon and Hildebrand under the basket for the Lancers. He misses two. Hobner with the rebound. Under 40 seconds to play. Lancers trail by three. Eddings outside to Hildebrand. Inside layup. Good. 66-65. Now you do want a foul. And a timeout taken by Purcell Marion. The official under the basket signaled four on the five second, which would have been a five second call, and the turnover. Scott Kerr bailed out his team. Yeah, sometimes you don't always get that call. Especially when you're trying to get the official at half court to make the call and not the official doing the counting. That's right. I just got a note, Barrett Cohen and the family are still watching and they're watching a good one tonight. What Barrett, a game. Barrett, Graham and Natalie, glad you guys are tuned in. Glad the rest of you are tuned in to watch this and we'll see if the Lancers can make a Houdini escape out of this game being down six with just a minute left. Now they're down one, but the Cavaliers have the ball. Marty, do foul right away? I try to so. get the steal. I think so. I think you want to extend this game. and I'd like to see Taylor. Especially if Taylor catches it. They're going to let Taylor catch it. Yeah, I, I would let Taylor be the one. That's number three would be the one I'd want to see at the free throw line. Javante Lyons inbounding the ball. They'll get it into Taylor. Oh, and they're not Taylor able to foul Taylor quickly got the ball away. Lyons bringing the ball up. And he will be fouled. Now, Lions is a different story. Lions is a 78% free throw shooter. He'll go the line, shooting two with a chance to put the Cavaliers up three with just 15 seconds left on the clock. First free throw up and Ooh. off the back rim, no good. So the Lancers are going to have a shot here if they get a rebound. And that is extremely important. Box out. Second free throw. Good. Two-point lead for Purcell. 67-65. Inbounds to Hobner. Hobner will bring the ball up. 11. Down to 10. Goes to the basket. He is bumped on the way to the hoop. He'll get a chance to shoot two. Alex Dotson on that foul has fouled out of the game. <laughs> But more importantly, Riley Hobner with 7.9 seconds left, heads to the line, looking to tie this game up as the Cavaliers currently lead 67-65. Hobner, 82% free throw shooter. First free throw up and Good. A one-point game. And he looked confident in the stroke on that first one, Marty. See if he can do it again. Up and no good. Loudon with the rebound. He loses it out of bounds. And the Lancers have the ball. Last touch by a Cavalier with five seconds left. LaSalle trailing. 67-66. What a game we've had tonight. Oh, this is 
This is intense. Marty, you run your best inbounds play, and you want to have Hobner. Well, I think you want to be, I, I think what you want to do here, Jeff, is you want to be going toward the basket and either try to get a try to get a foul call, use the body, try to draw that foul with the body, see if you can get to the line. They've already, with Dotson fouling out, that was one of their six foot four players that's out of the game. So a little bit less size inside for the Cavaliers. I'd be a little surprised if they don't check Garrett back into the game here. He's he's also about the same size, but but they're not. They're going to have a relatively small lineup. Yeah, they are. With the exception of Wara. Wara, the 6'6 junior. And Marty, of course, the Lancers, I'm sure the plan is to let Riley Hobner take the shot. Or is the plans for Coden Lambert, who's not in the game. He played hero. They do have to inbound it from a bit of an odd spot yeah, out of bounds. in that corner over there. Five seconds left, Lancers down a point. Get it into Hobner, he's double teamed. Goes on the baseline. Pass no is foul. knocked away, and Purcell Marion survives to beat LaSalle 67-66. LaSalle unable to get a shot off, and the Cavaliers break the nine game losing streak to the Lancers. LaSalle loses in heartbreak fashion. And I'll tell you, Jeff, that I, I think where they had to inbound that ball had a lot to do with that. They're, they didn't have the right spacing that you normally get from under the basket. And you know, credit the Cavs with a good defensive stand to prevent them from getting a shot off. I mean, Riley Hobner had the ball twice, and Purcell Marion did a nice job of double teaming him, and he lost the ball on that uh, final attempt to go up with the shot, was unable to get it off. Isn't this isn't this the first uh, non-GCL South loss at home in Since quite two, some time? 2012. LaSalle had won 12 straight versus the GCL Central. And their last loss was to Fenwick six years ago. At home? At home. Yeah. And Purcell Marion comes in <coughs> to beat the Lancers 67-66. Tell you what, we had talked about, about midway through that fourth quarter that Purcell had to go on a run. It had been that five to 10 point Lancer lead for most of that uh, ball game. And that's exactly what the Cavaliers did. And you know, I think they really went on that run by turning LaSalle over and getting some uh, transition baskets. Yeah, you know, a little bit of inexperience showed on, on some of those turnovers against the press. Uh, the Lancers faced that, that press uh, the entire ball game. And, you know, Purcell got just enough turnovers to to get the W. With the loss, the Lancers fall to four and six on the season. Purcell Marion with the win has now won four straight and sees their record go to nine and four on the year. Cavaliers on Friday night have another big game. They will be at home against undefeated McNicholas, who is a perfect 10 and 0. And of course, the Lancers will be back here on Friday night to play St. Mary's of New York, a school from outside of Buffalo. And we will have that here on LaSalle Broadcasting Network with uh, coverage starting at 7.15. There, are no, there is no freshman or reserve game on Friday night. That's right. So um, and if, if you'd heard the interview at halftime with Athletic Director Keith Pantling, he had talked about that this was a, uh, when he had gone to school at Canisius, that this was a school that he was uh, very aware of in the Buffalo area, another Catholic school, smaller version, and uh, reached out to them to come down here because they will face the Lancers on Friday night, and then they will get the Elder Panthers at the pit on Saturday. Yeah, nice trip. It is. So uh, it's something that uh, Keith had talked about wanting to do more of since they're not going to be making that trip to uh, Florida anymore. He wants to schedule some more home games and uh, he likes getting some of these teams from different locations across the country 
to come in and play the Lancers. And uh, that will happen on Friday night as the Lancers will meet the Lancers. That's right. That'll be a good game. Well, I'm sure there's tickets remaining. So uh, be great to have you come out. I, I did hear news today that the – uh, the weather is maybe supposed to be a little suspect, so that's why they, they canceled grade school night. Right. So if you don't get the chance to come come here for the game, a little afraid of the snow or afraid of the weather, dial us in. Yeah. You you found us here tonight. You can come. You can uh, dial us up on Friday night. The St. Mary's team out of New York uh, was a perfect seven and zero. They had a game tonight and tomorrow night. So we'll see what their record is when they roll in here Friday to Bill Katie Court. Marty, you got a uh, look at the uh, the final final scoring numbers, or I'll give you a moment yeah, to do me that. Yeah, to tally them up here. As um, LaSalle suffers a heartbreaking loss here tonight, 67-66, a game that they led through the majority of this contest. And um, really the deciding factor was – Purcell Marion's Javante Lyons knocked down a couple of threes from the corner that ended up putting Purcell Marion up six with a minute left. The Lancers fought back, got to within a point, and Riley Hobner unable to get his shot off in those final five seconds underneath the Lancer basket, and Purcell Marion beats the Lancers by a single point. So for Purcell, they were led tonight by uh, number 11, Javante Lyons, with 23 points. Brian Wara had 16. A.J. Garrett with 9. Alex Dotson with 7. Um, Jared Baldock with 5. And Ace Taylor with 3. And Clark Jefferson with 2 points uh, for Purcell. And then for the Lancers, they were led by Riley Hobner's 21 points. 10 for Derek Eddings, 9 for Henry Loud, and 8 for Cole Hildebrand, 6 apiece for Nathan Vogelpohl and Coden Lambert, and 5 for Dion Campbell, and 1 point for Cam Porter. And you total all that up, and it's a 1-point deficit for the Lancers tonight who lose this one. Well, it's just a tough way to lose when you were winning for the great majority of this game. Would have been a huge boost for this young inexperienced Lancer squad to beat a very good Purcell Marion team that's already beaten Elder, you know, played Moeller very tough this year, ended up losing by just 10 points. And this Purcell Marion team is going to be it's a D3 team, so they're going to make a nice run in the Division Three tournament. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, they've got some size that I don't think many D3 schools can uh, – match up with yeah they did a nice job staying um uh, staying focused tonight and and uh coming back from a deficit after three quarters yeah i mean uh, really talks a lot about their um their grit and determination and it's a veteran team i mean it's it's a team that has started four juniors and one senior but a lot of those juniors played last had year. played last year they had That's three right, returning Jeff. starters whereas lasalle one returning starter and a combined 10 points from that team last year. And I think that inexperience showed down the stretch that they were able to make the big shot to beat right. Elder Friday night. <laughs> Tonight, you know. Not so lucky on Not so court. lucky, not able to get that shot off and falls 67-66. We're going to close things down here for the night. Marty, I'll give you uh, your final comment here. No, I mean, uh, uh, an exciting game tonight. We're glad you joined us because it was a, it was a great game. We, we like to see the Lancers all the other end of the, the win-loss column, but, but you got treated to an exciting game tonight, as all these games here at Bill Cady Court are. We hope you join us on Friday night as well. We want to thank everybody involved in our broadcast tonight. I don't know if we got everybody's name, Brody Engel. Uh, I know it was operating the camera here next to us. Oh, well, who else we got, Doug? Alex Hemsath. And all the other great guys who helped us. We'll give them credit on Friday we, night. We will definitely reach out and, and give them credit for that. Hopefully the printer's up and working. We'll get you some more in-depth stats come Friday night when LaSalle meets St. <laughs> Mary's out of New York. So, once again, the final score was LaSalle falling to the Purcell Marion Cavaliers 
67-66. to 66. For my partner, Marty Strohoffer, I'm Jeff Bossy. As always, we appreciate you watching LaSalle Answer Basketball here on the LaSalle Broadcasting Network.